compliance with the open public meeting law, I wish to state that on June 22, 2018, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board. Mail to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's be meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session. A portion of this meeting will be available on Upper Township TV Channel 97 and on the Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. All please rise for the salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with the liberty of justice for all. God bless you. Call the roll, Bart, please. Mr. Barr. Here. Mr. Coggins. Present. Mr. Corson. Present. Mr. Young. Here. And Mayor Palumbo does not be with us this evening. I have approval of the minutes for June 11, 2018, regular meeting and closed session. A. Let's start with A. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Mr. Barr. Mr. Barr. Mr. Barr. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. Mr. Corson. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Motion is carried. Four in favor. Motion for B minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Report of the governing body. Barr? I just have one item this evening that I'd like to report on. In 2017, uh, the Township Committee adopted a resolution for um, authorizing a shared services agreement with Cape May County uh, for special events uh, for personnel. That agreement um, was, was then sent down to the county. Um, they had some changes down there and the agreement was just recently returned to Upper Township. Uh, when it was returned though, it was returned for um, to um, include additional uh, county uh, services uh, personnel along with um, equipment. So if um, you would like to move forward with that, I would just need a motion and a second and, and the vote to uh, authorize uh, Deputy Mayor Barr to sign that agreement. Just, just to add to that, the agreement itself is the same. We don't have to use the equipment that they attached to the equipment list. It's just if you wanted to. Um, they wanted it to encompass both services and equipment. In the past, we've used their personnel for events. Especially. I make a motion to uh, accept and approve the uh, county sheriff service. <coughs> Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor. Thank you. That's all I have this evening, sir. Thank you. Mr. Young? Nothing at this time. We do have a number of items for closed session. Okay. Paul? Nothing at this time, thank you. Okay, Barb? I have nothing this evening. Round yeah. Robin. John? Just like to make a comment uh, commending Mrs. Spiegel on her recent audit for the township uh, with zero audit findings. And uh, the township had a very clean audit and was complimented by our auditing team. So uh, congratulations it's, and well, thank you for your work. It's not just my audit, it's actually of all the departments in the township. So. Congratulations to all the departments for doing a... Unlike Philadelphia, where they have $31 million on account of work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barb. <coughs> that was it. So, um, yeah, 4th of July again. Uh, we'll be held on the 4th. Uh, we'll be opening it up at 4 o'clock. Uh, we'll have uh, food vendors. We'll have some other vendors there. We'll also have two bands playing beginning at 5. Pony rides, Penny Zoo, face painting. Um, and then the uh, fireworks immediately following somewhere around 9.30. And we're hoping that everybody gets out and enjoys it again. Uh, we are looking for a few volunteers, so if anybody would like to come out and give us a hand for an hour or two, it would be appreciated. Uh, again, we set the date for the fall car show. It'll be November 3rd at Amanda's Field. Rain date will be the 4th. And we're also looking for volunteers for there. Uh, as far as baseball, uh, press box is almost complete. 
and the pole barn for the uh, batting cages uh, is up and is waiting to do some other finishes for that so they can get it up and operating. And again, I'd like to go on record thanking baseball for their contributions for the uh, amount of money they put into the Amanda Field ballpark to enable to get it done. That's all I have. Okay. Mr. Porth? At this time, uh, we do have one situation that came up today. We did have a dog in the neighborhood, is township get struck with a car. Please, people, be attentive to your pets. It wasn't the dog's fault. People, things happen. It was a shame it happened, but it happened. And I have, I have one thing to report. Uh, Saturday, June 30th, 9 o'clock. For those of you that may be interested, there is going to be a mayor's meeting about bulkheads at the Strathmere Volunteer Fire Department. So that's going to be on Saturday at 9 o'clock for those that are interested. And that's all I have to report. Let <coughs> me get on to the resolutions. Resolution number one. Congratulating the Upper Township Girls Softball <coughs> Minor League Team DBO on becoming the 2018 Little League Girls Softball Minor Division New Jersey District 16 Champions. Motion to approve. Second. Call roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Porson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? And number two, appointments to the Upper Township Green Team Advisory Committee. Move the resolution. Second. 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 Over. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. Number three. Appointing additional 2018 season Beach Patrol personnel. Motion to appoint. Second. Over. Over. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. Item four, appointing the 2018 season Beach Patrol personnel contingent upon background clearance. Motion approved. <coughs> Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. <coughs> Item number five, authorizing a professional services contract which sways us communication group for the maintenance of the Upper Township Internet website. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number six, chapter 159 resolution for the insertion of a special item of revenue into the 2018 budget that was not determined at the time of the adoption of the budget. State of New Jersey 2018 Clean Communities Grant in the amount of 36,323.33. Move the resolution and for the record, uh, for everybody's information, this is not an expense to the township. This is additional revenue coming into the township for uh, a grant that we received for clean communities. Second. Full roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number seven, authorizing the mayor to sign an amended and restated license agreement with New Jersey American Water Company, Roof Management LLC, and Hard Just Management LLC for the installation of emer emergency communications equipment. Move the resolution. Second. Full roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Item number eight, authorizing a notice of violation and abatement of nuisance pursuant to Township Code Section 11 1. <coughs> Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number nine, authorizing the award of a contract with CDW Government LLC for information technology equipment. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 10, resolution and certification with respect to the 2017 annual audit and in compliance with the local finance board of the state of New Jersey. Move the resolution. Second. Call roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. 
Motion is carried. Item number 11, local unit budget examination. Move the resolution. Second. Call roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? <coughs> yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried with all in favor. <coughs> Item number 12, under ordinances. This is a public hearing. Public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number 6, 2018. An ordinance amending revised general ordinances, chapter 10, building and housing, and chapter 11, property maintenance of the code of Upper Township. Before you open this up to a public hearing, um, I do have some comments and, and <clears throat> frankly some proposed amendments based on some further investigation with code enforcement and some issues that have come to light um, since we introduced the ordinance. Uh, first, I should say, um, and I know not none of the public uh, members of the public are here for this ordinance. Um, the ordinance it wanted to do three things. One was to bring in conformity some of our older ordinances with state law. That's why you'll see some sections uh, deleted and replaced by a new section. That new section is in accordance with state statute. Uh, for example, the demolition of unfit structures. We already have an, an ordinance that essentially says the same thing. The new ordinance has protective procedures in it um, uh, that, that, that's replacing the old ordinance, has protective procedures for uh, due process rights and notices and hearings and things like that. Secondly, there was uh, some uh, requests out of Strathmere particularly for a piling ordinance and a demolition of structures ordinance, some type of regulation along those lines. That is new. Thirdly, there's a property maintenance component. Most of the provisions in the property maintenance component are already in our ordinance in a different form. Changes were made to clarify some language based upon municipal court cases and judges that have asked for the language to be clarified, that it needs to be more clear. Um, there are sections, and you'll hear me talk about some amendments that I'm going to recommend tonight that were new, that after a further investigation was looked into, uh, in my opinion, they should be changed or uh, 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 one section should be deleted. But I wanted to give you a, an outline. It's not a new ordinance in particular. It changes and updates uh, primarily our existing ordinances. The part that's new is the piling section that deals really with those buildings that have to be on pilings that are primarily in Strathmore. Um, with that stated, um, one of the biggest issues that came to my attention after the ordinance was introduced is that there was a recommendation through code enforcement. Um, and if you turn to the ordinance itself, it's uh, section 11116, it's occupancy limits. Um, there's a series of uh, square footage occupancy limits and other requirements. Um, I, I talked to Paul Dietrich after the last meeting. Uh, that was pulled almost uh, verbatim from the New Jersey regulation uh, 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 for code enforcement guidance on habitable properties. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit our town. Um, when we looked at it, uh, in my opinion, we have a lot of older houses and sometimes multi-generational people living in those houses that by adopting that section, it would be a they automatically be in violation, but nobody has a problem with it. And after talking to code enforcement and the zoning officer, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any pressing issues and complaints or actions in the municipal court along those lines, and there haven't been any. So my recommendation is to the committee is to delete that section from the ordinance. That it shouldn't be there. If you don't have a problem, you don't fix it. If all of a sudden we have development in our centers and we find overcrowding uh, and there are problems with it, then you can address that as need be in our township rather than the statewide standard, which Frankly, after I reviewed it, it doesn't fit much of the older housing in our area. Mm -hmm. That's, that's Dean, I think they're having problems here in the back. I'm, I'm sorry. Wait a second. What's that? Can you hear? Can you hear all? Occup can you hear it's the occupancy section. I recommended section. that section 11 1.16 mm -hmm. occupancy limits be, be deleted, that it not be in the ordinance. Now, that, that if, if you take this recommendation and you amend the ordinance, that would be considered a substantial. Well, why don't you give people an opportunity to move to the front row instead of the back row if they want to hear? Can, every, can, any, can everybody hear? No. Can you hear what's being said? No. 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 Occupancy limits. Occupancy limits. That's being deleted. Well, I shouldn't say it's being deleted. It's up to the township committee. Is 
this help you any? Is this a little better? Yes. Sorry about that. <coughs> Um, as, I, as I indicated before, we did some legwork, we reviewed it, we looked at uh, complaints that have been uh, lodged, and we made sure that, um, uh, or not made sure, but uh, determined that these occupancy limit standards are not really necessary due to any problems that we have in the township. They were really put in through a recommendation, I guess, from the Code Enforcement Office to be consistent with the state law habitability standard in, our, in the state regulations. Uh, if they're looking at it, I don't think it fits our town, and we don't have complaints about it, so it should come out. That's what I'm recommending to the Township Committee. Procedurally, when you amend something substantially and you take out a substantial portion of an ordinance, it has to be republished. Yes. You have two choices. You can table the ordinance, introduce it in its amended form, and then publish it, and then have a, a hearing, go through the whole process again. Or you can amend it. You can indicate tonight what amendments you want. We will publish that amended uh, ordinance. It has to be published uh, uh, within at least two days before your next meeting that you're going to have another hearing on and vote on it, uh, which means it could be fit. It could fit in the first meeting in July. Um, uh, but I will also have other minor amendments that I'm going to suggest here. Um, so I'll let you think about the ones that the, the amendments that I'm giving uh, or suggesting, and then you can decide how you want to handle uh, whether or not you want to amend the ordinance. You, obviously, you can act on it tonight. Um, you're going to open up to the public. I would suggest all this public's here that you should open it up to them, let them have their piece and say their piece, um, uh, and then uh, at that point you can decide how you want to handle the procedural uh, aspects of the the either ordinance as it is amended ordinance or revise it and introduce it again. Obviously, if you revise it and introduce it again, it'll be at the earliest, the second meeting in July, that the hearing would be. Okay. All right? Um, let me just mention a couple other things we, we looked at. Uh, after reviewing some of the provisions that were, frankly, verbatim taken out of the uh, state statute on um, removal of dangerous structures, um, I spoke to the tax assessor because we do do this now and we have the right, we've done it in the past where we've had to demolish when, a, when an owner has not had a, an unsafe structure and it's had to be demolished. It, if the cost of that can be set as a lien, collected as uh, similar to a tax lien against the property. Our ordinances today say the same thing. What's being done now is it's being <coughs> updated to provide procedural safeguards and hearings that weren't necessarily in accordance with the current state law in our ordinance. One of the things I'm going to recommend tonight is that we also uh, have the Township Committee act on the decision to demolish the structure and certify to the tax assessor the cost to be uh, applied. In other words, we'll take an action of the Township Committee to do that. Um, again, the ordinance itself provides safeguards. The, the construction code official who feels it's unsafe has to give notification to, to the property owner and said this is not fit for human uh, uh, occupancy. And then the property owner has the right to a hearing. They have a hearing. If it's still determined that they're not going to correct the violation, then the, the code enforcement officer would be authorized to recommend and take action to demolish or remove the structure. I should point out the only difference as to why this is in our ordinance as opposed to using state law, state law allows our construction officer to do that now. He has the right to go in and, in layman's terms, condemn a building to say, you can't live here, it's shut down, and it's dangerous, and it has to be torn down. Under state law, he has the right to do that. The difference between what we're proposing is that there's another state law that says if you follow these procedures, these due process procedures, give people their day, have a hearing, then after that, if they don't correct the violation, you can then bring it, you, you don't have to sue them for the cost of tearing it down. You can actually apply it against their uh, municipal liens akin to a tax lien. That's the difference. We actually had this, that's the difference between what the construction code official has by rights now under state law and what we're asking to do pursuant to state statute, we can adopt an ordinance that allows for this. And again, we already have an ordinance that allows for this. This one just complies more with state law. So if I understand this correctly, then with this amendment, what we're doing is we are protecting the taxpayers from the cost of a lawsuit 
in the event that we act lawfully under state statutes but don't have something in a local ordinance that permits us to put a lien on the property without going through a uh, lawsuit. Right. It, 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 it saves you one step of having to collect it. You can collect it the same way you would collect taxes. Okay. But you have to go through procedures. It has, it has uh, safeguards. In other words, the person has to be noticed. They have a right to a hearing. They have a right to present evidence as to why it's not. They have a right to correct the violation within a reasonable amount of time. And they have the right to appeal it. It actually says it in our ordinance. They can appeal to the Superior Court if they don't like the decision of the, of the uh, uh, construction code official. Okay, um, a second item, or a third item, I should say. Um, in our current ordinance, we, we follow the stat, uh, state law with respect to unsightly and, and uh, it's frankly termed under the law a nuisance, excess weeds, grass, debris, um, brush, things of that nature. There were a couple of resolutions tonight that the Township Committee authorized those properties to get cleaned up. Um, this new uh, ordinance really only addressed the way when it was introduced, grass and weeds. I suggest at section 11-1.9 that we also add what's already in our existing ordinance uh, that the, the, uh, the, the exterior of the premises also have to be free from uh, brush, uh, dying trees, filth, garbage, trash, and debris. And again, we can have a self-help mechanism after notice to the owner. That's what was authorized tonight on two of our resolutions. Pleasure. There's overgrowth on properties. Um, and, and the Township Committee has authorized the Code Enforcement Officer to send a notice to those owners and foreclosure uh, banks, if, there's, it's a, if it's in a bank foreclosure. You've all seen them around town. If you've gone to the Wawa, you know what that property looks like next to the Wawa. It needs to be cleaned up. And that's what this does. And what I'm suggesting in this amendment is that if they go and they cut the lawn and they find an old chair or something, they can pick that up too and get rid of that. It's just adding debris to it. Uh, again, it's already there. It's a different format. If you look at this and you saw publishing and say, oh my gosh, this is all new. That isn't new. It's already in our ordinances. And it's already under state law. Let's see. There's a, uh, a section 11-1 Point one four. Um, I know there's been a lot of concern about that. Uh, those sections are all within our ordinance now, but it refers to what's called the Boca Code. Um, and they are when people have dilapidated uh, unregistered vehicles, trailers, things of that nature on their property, they've been taken to municipal court. Uh, the court cases, on occasion, as I understand it, I've, I'm not the one that brings the township suits in court. That's done by the prosecutor. But as I understand it, this was reviewed by the prosecutor, and it's clarified as to what constitutes a uh, inoperable vehicle or an inoperable trailer. It gives more definition. If that was significantly or primarily at the request of the judges in those court cases. They want more detail on that. Um, that's the only real change. All these other standards are still in our ordinance. Now, if you look at our ordinance, it says the Boca Code. It refers to Boca Code. That's a separate code that state law allows you to refer to. The problem is that was adopted, our ordinance in that section, in 1986. The Boca Code isn't really used anymore. So what we're doing is we're codifying those standards now within our own ordinance. So it's just updating our ordinance to the current procedures and adding detail into those uh, 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 areas that the courts have asked for more detail. One of the things, though, uh, apparently there was a, a public complaint, not a complaint, but a request, that there are sometimes people might have a trailer that in order to use, it's used off-site, in order to use it off-site in its normal uh, situation, it does have to have electric uh, run to it. If you look in section O, I'm sorry, section E, uh, on 11-1.14, uh, um, I'm suggesting that the uh, pro prohibition that says shall not be provided with utility connections uh, uh, other than required for vehicle maintenance and startup for a period of 72 hours, I think you can accomplish the same thing by saying other than reasonably required for vehicle use off-site. 
Um, that way you can still hook something up, but you're not going to have the expanse, it's trailer, you're not going to live in it, you're not, it's just, you only have it hooked up so it can be used. For example, if there's a generator that needs to be kept uh, uh, electric, electric going on it, or if it's got a refrigeration unit that you use and want to, the, when you go camping and want to have your, your, your refrigerated items in it, you're just not living in it. Because that's the problem in the township. We have had court cases. Um, and I'll defer to Paul, he might know more about them, but we have had court cases in municipal court where people are living in trailers um, instead of the houses. And that's pro prohibited in the township. You, know, you could allow it if you wanted to, but it shouldn't, it, it's not permitted. There are rare occasions that if the people want and think there's good reason to, they can go to the zoning board. On occasion, my recollection is they've done it to the zoning board when they're building a house, they put a trailer on the lot in temporary purposes. But to have, it's not a good idea in any town, in a residential or any other zone, to have people living in trailers that, on residential we, lots. We use that in case of emergency or uh, my house was burnt down. Uh, we have used it, yeah. Anything like that, you know, we, they get a certain extended amount of time. Right, and, and, and that has been approved back. in the past. And does it continue to come back? And the zoning board heard an application last year for a residential trailer to be used during the summer months at a residential. The zoning board did hear an application last year uh, to allow during the summer months a residential uh, travel trailer to be used during the summer, and the zoning board denied that application and said it did not fit into the, the neighborhood. So, you know, it is a concern and an issue. That, that was addressed by the zoning board, and Shelley's had to cite a couple other people and give them notices. <coughs> yeah, one of the and, and that again is a violation currently under our ordinances. Correct. It's not permitted currently. We're just clarifying it by codifying it in accordance with current law in our ordinance, as opposed to referring to a 1980s Boca Code that you have to go look up separately. That's what's happening here. One of the questions I have here concerning this motor vehicles, trailers, boats, etc. Um, I don't see, and maybe I'm missing it, nor do I understand <coughs> this to be uh, reflective of one particular zone. I, I see this as more of something that ref that is a township-wide type of ordinance. So my thought process here is, should this not be defined, you know, except as, you know, maybe in a commercial zone, you could have a number of, you know, motor vehicles. If you had a, if you had a mine, for example, and you had a number of office trailers on it, well, or it, if you had a, if you had a trucking facility or a farm. It, here, if you look at 11-1.14C, it says, those type of recreational vehicles, ATVs, trailers, boats, motorized vehicles, stored, kept, or parked in accordance with Chapter 20 of the revised general ordinances of the township. And that sets forth the standards that you just described for anybody's use, whether it's residential, commercial, or whatever. And, and for a commercial property, <coughs> they would have to have that as approved as part of their site plan. So it's typical that we would have a commercial site plan come in and say, hey, we need some outside storage to store some vehicles here or something like that. So that would be on their approved and commercial site plan. We're not now changing what about, anything. What about somebody with a farm? We do have farmland within the township. When, when I read the ordinance and the definitions, I don't think tractors and, and those type of farm implements are, a, are covered may, under this ordinance. You may have a storage van or a tractor trailer stored at a farm for a period of time during certain seasons. That's Wait, remember what this is prohibiting. Mm -hmm. you, if it's registered, you're allowed. Now, if a tractor and you're on a farm, that's an answer I'll use to the farm. It's like a forklift at ShopRite. Nobody's going to say you can't have your forklift at ShopRite. Okay, no, I'm not talking about a tractor per se. I'm talking about a part of a tractor trailer, like a dry van. Or a, or a flatbed trailer or something. If it's something that's registered, if it's registered, you're allowed to have it. You're just not allowed to park it on the street or in your front yard. Got it. Okay. That'll be addressed in 20. It, it already is addressed in 20. It's but already in the other section of the ordinance. Just for an example, I happen to be a little bit familiar with farming. Um, we have hay wagons. They're not a registered vehicle. But it's ancillary to the use of a farm, so it's, yes, like, it's, the, it's like the forklift. It belongs on the farm. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm just looking for a clarification because I got to. No, I, I understand it. And, and <laughs> nothing, 
nothing along those lines is changing with this. This is really for, for people who have unregistered vehicles, more than the one that's allowed, or trailer or whatever, and that are uh, inoperable and in bad shape. Somebody has got no tires on it, it's rusting, it's got no windows, and it's basically an eyesore to the town and to, to the neighbors. So that it, has, it gives you power for public safety and health and welfare to, to regulate it. And that is regulated today. All this does is spell it out a little more detail and codifies it in a way that's clearer under our ordinance than referring to a 30-year-old Boca code or a 40-year-old Boca Good. code. Would you agree, Paul? Yes. Okay. Now, um, there's one other, this is really minor, there's a typo. The last section, abatement, should be numbered 11-1.20. It says 11-2. Um, that's just the typo, it's missing a zero. I mean, it's missing a 1.20. So, those are the, my recommended amendments. Um, I would suggest at the very least, even if you feel that you want to reintroduce it, that because these folks are here, you let them speak, but that's up to the committee. Um, you, could, you could table this, not go to public hearing, and then reintroduce with an amended version, or you can listen to the public today, um, uh, uh, decide on the amendments, agree with a motion in a second as to what amendments you want, and then uh, we can try and get it uh, for a, a, an amended version published and then have it at the next meeting. It's a lot of work, very short period of time for the uh, uh, clerk, but Barbara assures me she can do it. Or, um, uh, and, and there will be a second chance if that happens that way, that you would be able to speak on the amended version as well after you've got a chance to read it at the next meeting. But it's your call how you want to procedurally go. You just ask me and I'll tell you the right way. I mean, could we take a straw vote now on the amendments? Yeah, do we? Well, that's up to you. You might want to listen to the public. Yeah, you might want to listen. I would, I, I would not vote on the amendments yet. These people all obviously come out and they want to speak. I would let, the, in my opinion, if you're going to go forward, unless you're just going to table it, um, uh, you should open it up to the public. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we should open it up to the public. I would do it now, because rather than vote on something, you yeah. can hear what they have to say and then decide what they want to do afterwards. Okay. That's my suggestion. You can do it differently if you want. Okay. Do we have any other comments? From the committee? No, I think we should open it up to the public and hear what they have to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, with that being said, thank you for everybody coming out here tonight. And the main reason why we go through this process in the introduction of an ordinance you know, we just don't write laws and pass legislation blindly and not get any input. And that's why we're here tonight, is to listen to feedback from the community and get an idea as far as what the impact is going to have on your lives and the quality of your life. So that being said, and seeing that we have such a large amount of people here tonight, I'm going to implement the five-minute rule. Everybody's going to get a shot. You got five minutes to do your song and dance, all right? That, because it's gonna give everybody the opportunity. I don't want people getting discouraged because somebody took over the stage and you know, you get aggravated and you leave. So you're gonna get five minutes. Uh, what we ask for is you come up to the podium, state your name, your address, your serial number, everything else. And then we're gonna to listen to what you have to say. And above all things, let's be respectful of other people's opinions, what statements they may possibly have. We don't always see eye to eye, but uh, let's give everybody an opportunity to uh, voice what their concerns are. So that being said, we're gonna open it up. Uh, who's the first taker? Yes, sir. My name is Mark Schuler. I live on Route 9 in Palermo. Living in a township for over 50 years, grew up with some of you, know most of you. One of the issues, you all want street rods and hot rods come in here and show. The average street rod or hot rod takes three to make one. I am an NHRA drag race driver and nostalgia super stock. It took me three cars to build my one Hemi Cuda. If you all come in my yard and violated me for having those parts, it wouldn't happen. Those parts are too valuable. I think that if there's a complaint about somebody having a couple broken down or taking apart cars in their yard, there should be 
a committee or a group of peers or something that's formed and I'd volunteer to bring together and say, hey, let's look at this guy and see, okay, this is obviously junk. All right, dude, you get rid of the junk, okay? Or no, these are valuable cars. He's building a, a car for the show and allow it. So I think that there should be some mitigation there as far as finding somebody with no tires on their vehicle because they're changing out a differential or whatever the case may be. I think it needs to be addressed. I think I've used up a couple minutes. Um, another issue is vehicles. This was a farming community. A lot of you know that. Almost every development around here was a farm at one time. Anybody with a decent sized garden has a tractor for plowing and disking, another one for cultivating, probably a backhoe for pushing manure around, etc. Certainly they got a, uh, a truck body to store dry hay in, things like that, okay? It has to be looked at on an individual basis to say, hey, this guy's got a yard full of junk, or this guy uses this for this and that for that and that for that, and adjustments be made. That's all I wanted to say about um, the uses or somebody's perception of what is junk or a taken apart vehicle or a vehicle in disrepair or a vehicle being this one's got a good motor, that one's got a good transmission, that one's got a good body, we're making one out of three, it's going to be in the show next year, then these old parts are going to get rid of except for this. And as far as the, the idea of saying driving down a street and seeing somebody's yard totally full of crap, I absolutely agree. And the issue should be if they have stuff Put it out behind the barn, put it out behind the building, put it in a building, put it behind a fence. I don't want to see it. That's the idea. We don't want to drive through this township and look at that yard and say, oh my God, look at that dump, you know. Clean it up. If you have to, if it means so much to you, hide it, put it away. I don't want to see it from the street. So if you could say that as an amendment to um, violating somebody for having stuff versus having stuff that's seen, I think there's a difference. That's all. Thanks, sir. I was going to say the ones that you, the complaints happen are not the ones that have it neat and orderly and out of sight. The complaints come from the ones that decorate their front yards with. Right. <laughs> Understood. And, and obviously, in the case of vehicles, um, somebody's idea of a piece of junk is somebody's idea of something that's really valuable. I mean, you run into a 1964 Belvedere with a max wedge in it; it's worth a quarter million dollars but it's a piece of junk to you because it's not, you know, three to five years old. So there's, there ought to be a group of some kind that says, yeah, that's garbage, or hey, you know, put it away. That type of thing. Yeah. Thanks, sir. <coughs> Next. Hi, my name is uh, John Castaldi, and uh, I want, first of all, I'd like to say, I. I I appreciate the uh, amendments that you had suggested because uh, they were a lot of the things that were on my hit list to come and talk about tonight. Um, and I don't, and I agree. I don't think anybody wants to drive around the township and see cars on blocks in the front yard and you know mobile homes sitting cockeyed with uh, you know three families living in them. I don't think anybody wants that in our township. You know we're proud of where we live and we're proud of what we have in our homes. But also I think. Uh, the other thing that I did is when I saw all of the uh, chatter on Facebook about this is I did a little bit of research and I found, like, like uh, Mr. Young said, most of these are already on the books and I think there was an effort in place to modernize some of these because some of the things that I saw were 20 and 30 years, made 20 and 30 year old references. But I think in some cases um, in an effort to be become a little bit more specific, it turned out to be maybe a little bit broad in some cases. Um, and I'd like to, a couple of those I'd like to bring up in just kind of random, random thoughts. One of these was about painting vehicles. The way it's written, the way I read it at least, and it could be interpreted that way, is if I have a, a car that has a, I'm trying to upkeep and I go to Walmart and I buy a can of black paint that's color matched and I go out and I spray my car, I can't do that because I'm not in a paint booth. I think it's already in some EPA guideline or something like that, that if you're doing painting with Imran or some, some sorts of uh, epoxy-based paint, that they'd be done in a manner that's uh, consistent with vapor recovery and things like that. So I would think that in, in a situation like that, you could say that you know, painting has to be done in a manner consistent with whatever standards exist rather than just outlawing all painting of cars. Um, another, another thing that I wanted to bring up was uh, was about the RVs and things parked in the yard. People that know me 
know that uh, last year, 39 out of 52 weekends, I was away in my RV. We do motorcycle racing every weekend, very, very active at it. So we leave Friday afternoon, we come back Sunday night, and the first thing I do is I back it down my driveway and I plug it back into my post that my electrician put in for me so I keep my refrigerator cold. Um, I open up the slides and I go to bed. The next day I come out and I sweep it all out because it's full of mud. The next day I do the dishes, the next day I do the laundry. Now it's Wednesday, Thursday, I'm packing it back up again, and Friday I'm leaving again. So if I have to close my awnings, put my awnings back out, close my awnings, put my back out, that's going to be a real, a real, a real drag. Could we, could we make the wording in such a way that it would just be, you can't occupy it? Do we have to define what well, occupancy is? I, I, Dan addressed that. Well, we addressed it partially. I think yeah, he, he didn't, he's, he didn't fully. he's parsing words pretty well, I think. The, because the, yeah, what, there was what we're a, talking about is, is there was the, the 72 the hours. Yeah, you can't have it open. And here's the problem in enforceability, and it's up to the committee. You're the guys that have the ultimate decision. Um, when you have the slides out for an extended period of time, that generally is a hallmark that somebody's in there. That Could be. when you bring them in, nobody's living there. And that's easier to prove right. in a court, and it's a bright line, than is somebody in there. Well, that's, that's the problem. I don't, I don't know what, I'm not an attorney, I don't know what the burden of proof is, but um, just to say that somebody is guilty because they might be living in it because they have their slides out, to me, seems like an encroachment on, what, what, on my If I may ask, sure. what is the, the reasoning behind you're not wanting to pull the slides in when you're not occupying? Well, when you clean the floor and you have piles of laundry from the weekend and you have you know, dirt. But don't you do that when you come home? <laughs> well, we come home usually Sunday at about midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. And we're not really thinking about cleaning the trail. But you do eventually clean it. We do, yeah. yeah. But so, by the time... But then but can't you bring the slides in when you clean not it? Not when it's dirty. It? I said after you clean it. Well, it usually takes about Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> but yes, we could. Do you... Uh, well, you know, I, I think what you're looking I, at I here... don't want to have an hourly clock running. That we don't have it that way. I well, that I, out. I think what you're looking at, too, when I recommended is, was that you time did. period is coming out. You took the 72 hours out. Out. It, let me let me tell you what it, let me read it. I know I talk fast, so I okay. apologize. And, but, and I did, did have difficulty hearing that part. But. So let me, let me read it again. i get to that section. Just a question real quick, John, while he's looking. When you, you plug it in so you have lights. I plug it in so my refrigerator stays okay. cold. Do you hook the water up to it? Uh, I usually refill the water. I don't hook the water. But you to refill it. the water tank and then you don't. So, yep. so I mean, maybe we could say electric for lights and if, as long as you don't have a, ho a sewer hose. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, I do my dishes in there. I do my dishes in the, yeah. in the camper. Well, you don't hook it up to your septic tank, do you? No, I dump it on the on the expressway, on the dump thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With the car going from, yeah. from off, from one off. <laughs> no, there's a... <laughs> let me just say this. Yeah, just open it up. That's right. Let me, let me say this. Can, can, what okay. we're missing here is we're missing the human element of a person conducting an investigation. That's what we're missing. Right. Just because you have this thing out there and this over <coughs> I think somebody can draw a conclusion if somebody's living in a trailer as opposed to right. hooking it up and maintaining food inside a refrigerator. That's, so uh, that's, what that's where, you know, when you look at the spirit of the law and the letter of the law, it, people need, get, you have to have confidence in your zoning officers and some of your officials that they're going to investigate these things, that you just don't take things from a neighbor saying, oh yeah, I saw him, he was in the trailer for two hours. That's not living in it. But you're gonna go, you're gonna investigate. I, I agree. What, what Mr. Young has said is, these are some of the changes that he's making to this ordinance so that you could still maintain your trailer, but not live in it. And that's, that's what it comes down to. We don't want people to be living in trailers. And we have, and since I've been on the Township Committee, we have had people come in in hardship cases because they had a fire or whatever, and we had no problem in saying, sure, you can stay in your trailer until you make your repairs. But the whole idea is we don't want to turn the township into a camper. I agree with you 100% on exactly. that, and that's not exactly. what I was asking. My concern is that if there is a time limit 
All it's going to take is some. Let me read. You did take that out. It's a moot point. These are bosses. They do it. a moot point. So let me let me. It said before shall not be provided with utility connections other than required for vehicle maintenance or startup for a period not to exceed 72 hours. That's right. Yeah. That's what you don't want. This right. is what I had suggested. Shall not be provided with utility connections other than reasonably required for use off site. And I deleted the rest of it. Oh, there you go. And I think anybody that would see that you're using that on a weekly basis and coming and going with it and maintaining it well mm -hmm. would understand that it's not a situation of blight, it's not a situation of habitation, it's just what you need to do to, you know, right. work with your your hobby or your, your career or whatever it may be. I don't know if my five minutes are up or not, but uh, I, I agree with what Mr. Schuler said about the, uh, about the cars, and, and I'll give you a, a point. Um, my two children, I have twin boys, they, when they turned 17 years old, about maybe three months before their birthday, we started getting them cars. Well, that's two unregistered cars because I have two children. My, car, my two cars were sitting next to the yard, next to the garage, the same place they would be parked if they had tags on them. Um, they were not a nuisance and, and nobody complained. But I think all it would have taken would be some busybody to ride by and say, oh, look, he's got two cars in the yard, make a complaint, and then I'd have the zoning officer in my yard. You know, I don't know if there's a, a remedy to that or if it's, or if it, a phone call from the zoning officer would say, yeah, okay, it's okay. But my concern is that if it's written in statute, then it's written in stone. If I have, if I'm prohibited to have two vehicles, now t for me, now my kids <coughs> have their cars registered, but I know other, there's another family right around the corner from me that has twin boys that are 16. They're going to be in the same situation. They're going to have two cars, I'm sure. Um, so I don't I, know. I if think any a, reasonable that, zoning that officer is already in our ordinances. Yes. Right. And I don't think, but Mr. isn't this an opportunity to put amendments to that? What's that? Is, since you're, since you are making amendments to these now, is there an opportunity to make amendments to the existing language like we are doing well, now? There's always process? an opportunity to amend. The, the question is, can it be amended and still achieve the result that we want that the right. not so nice neighbor who has rotting unregistered cars all over the yard, <coughs> two or three or whatever, can still be dealt with? Something with a potential, that something with a potential to, to be a viable, I mean, I think there's, there needs to be some sort of mechanism for, well, for a human interpretation. Yeah, I can't write something that is what you ate for breakfast. Right. I, I, okay? I, I the judge can't enforce that because you don't know what's prohibited. It can't be what one person says, hey, this is fair. Um, it's got to have a bright line. That's part of the reason why we're revising it, is to make sure that it's done properly under the uh, state and, and required laws. Um, it's up to the township committee. I, one, one we do have problems with with property owners that have um, taken to the extreme what Mr. <coughs> Schuler has done John, and said, "Look, uh, I'm just working on these, but there's 25 of them out there." Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. One of the issues of clarification in terms of what constitutes, you know, a junk vehicle when it's you know in disrepair. Um, right. I don't know if the, if the mere fact of being unregistered would be the it's indicator. Basically, a code of laws want to make that determination if it's challenged. Right. It's just so we have um, better ordinances if we do have to proceed with anything like this. The description of what, in our eyes and township eyes, is a dilapidated vehicle in total disrepair, right. beyond with, repair, with no progress we being didn't made have or any repairing that in the ordinance it. before. Yes. But the, this is really so is the is the fact that a vehicle is unregistered no. the determining factor? No. Well, that's part of the way it kind determining of factor. Startup. You can have one unregistered vehicle on your property, right? And that's also How about a, right? Well, it was the Boca Code, and that's what we went by, and that's what's been the law in the township since 1986. Right? Well, if you kept talking about time limits, how about if you put a time limit in for the time of the complaint? complaint and have multiple vehicles in a time limit? No, on each vehicle, that if you didn't, if you well, if you're registered, if your vehicle's registered, and I don't know whether Mr. Schuler registers his or not, the ones that he's working on, um, but if, if it's registered, you're, you can have as many as you want as long as you don't put them in the front yard. Yeah. Now, how about if somebody has, let's say, a four car garage or a five car garage? You well, can, it's not outside. It's, it's not, not outside. outside. This okay. is this is only about cars that are stored. Yeah, yeah we're talking and, about. And if it has, a, if it has a title outside. and it's registered, the, I mean, you can have as many as you want, you just don't have to be in a side or rear yard. Behind the fence. 
you know, I mean, visible from the street kind of thing. I mean, you know, <laughs> that opens up a lot of things. What about somebody that has in a this, race car? There's nothing that says visible from the street. Um, I guess you could say you could have additional unregistered vehicles as long as they're visible, but then you, you're but encouraging they, some, they, there's some people that have a have vehicles junkyard that have a junkyard junk 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 behind a fence. Yeah. Right. Well, I, 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 this, can get, this can open up the, the rabbit yeah. hole that I don't know. Yeah. And I think you're out of time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, John. We appreciate it. <coughs> Next. Bob Rush, Steelman Town. Um, I'm a single father. I teach high school. I'm self-employed. I work 13, 14 hours a day sometimes. I don't get time to cut the grass all the time. I got a neighbor who's a pain in the butt. Every time my grass isn't cut for two, three weeks because I'm working, I have to pay my bills, I get a certified letter because my grass isn't cut. It gets very annoying that I have to get a certified letter from the township because my grass isn't cut. It's a waste of time, energy, taxpayers' dollars, and a time when all the regulations are supposed to get cut, we're adding more on. We're adding more on to the taxpayers, and it's enough. When is enough enough? When do we stop? It's my property. If I'm working so hard in order to pay the bill sometimes and I don't get to it and it's been a lousy spring with rain, rains every week, when I do have time, you can't cut the grass. So it gets very annoying having to go through some of this stuff. And this hasn't only happened this past year, it's happened multiple years in the past. Since I've had my house, I doubled the size of my house, I've improved my house, I've improved property value on it but yet I still get a nuisance letter because of a stupid neighbor. Very annoying. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Pete, you're chopping at the bed. I don't want to <laughs> chop. <coughs> Not much of a public speaker. My name is Peter Schuller. I live in Petersburg. Grew up in township, been here 50 years. I know all you guys. Vehicles. You know, I work, raise family, go to church live right, pay taxes, do all the right things. I like antique cars. I collect antique cars. My sons, you know, we're, there's a lot of blue collar people in Upper Township. We're old school, blue collar, hands on, generational hand-me-down people. These are skills, Upper Township took shop out, Ocean City doesn't have it. These are skills that our grandfather taught, our fathers that taught us and we teach our children. We work on stuff. We teach them in the backyard things they don't learn at school. We have vehicles. You know, so recently, I showed my son how to pop over some sheet metal in and put some bondo in it and spray it with a spray can. The, the ordinance doesn't clearly define painting. My concern is when you make an ordinance like that, it's not defined so you get to do what you want. And the concern is here, you want us to trust officials, but the ordinance is not specific. Now, I know you guys, but say they elect somebody else and they just get their, you know, a dog up their butt and all of a sudden you can't spray can. So the concern is that the ordinance is written generally, but it's not specific. So we want to know if you want to paint your lawn furniture, if you want to have a hobby, you want a spray can in your backyard, <coughs> spray painting in a certified paint booth. Which one is it? It doesn't say. I've fixed up many tractors and used rattle cans on them. Everybody knows. <laughs> you paint tractors, I got walk behinds, cultivators, we do stuff. I agree with these guys about multiple vehicles. Mm -hmm. I have some antique cars. I have antique insurance on them. I have antique tags, but not all of them. So one vehicle, they got fixed up a hot rod for my one son in high school, fixed up the next hot rod for my other son in high school, I'm fixing up another one. My, my front yard is probably neater than most. When you drive by my front yard, it's got flowers, it's neat, it's clean, it's perfect. My stuff's in my backyard. Mm -hmm. If my neighbors complain, it's none of their damn business. They shouldn't be putting their nose over the fence looking in my backyard. The problem that happens in the township is we have complainers. Complainers is generally a negative term. When somebody says complainer, you think a negative attribute. But complainers seem to get a preference. 
what happens is somebody complains, so I go to the township and I say, well, who was it? Well, you know, we really don't want to say, you know, I don't know if it's proper. No, I don't know if it's proper or not, so I don't want to rat anybody out, but... So they don't want to talk about the person that complains. But for me to defend myself, I have to come to a public hearing, which I hate, stand in front of the public, announce myself, be on TV, and talk on a microphone. Something's wrong with that. It seems like the complainers get a preference. So the complainers complain, they go to the township, the township makes a new ordinance, they make a rule to pacify the complainer. So now one person gets their way, what's the collateral damage? A thousand people lose their privileges and rights they've had for generations because this person bitched. Something's wrong with that. I think we need to look at that a little closer. For one, that's what I think's happening here. We get a complainer, everybody jumps to pacify that person, and everybody else gets hurt, and good people don't complain. They don't come out in public and talk about it. That's not really the way they are. They just deal with it. I got a neighbor that's horrible. She just is. She's been like that since I lived there. But I don't come to the township bitch about her, but she sits in her back porch with binoculars and looks at all her neighbors and calls in and complains. It's none of her damn business. The truth of the matter is, I think stuff should be allowed in your backyard because you work your whole life, you pay 30 year mortgage, you pay your taxes, you live right, and then people want to tell you what to do with your private time, your hobbies, your personal items. Something's wrong with that. Your neighbors don't like you, buy a fence. They don't fight. Saran's got trees for 50% off. Go buy shrubs. <laughs> So something to be said for these people that are saying, come on now, <clears throat> we do all the right things. We should have the freedom to express ourselves privately in our own yard. So I just want to talk about that. For painting, a couple items. It says motorized vehicles. Now it lists all the things that are motorized vehicles. And you said you'll have one unregistered. Can you have one unregistered jet ski, one unregistered boat, one unregistered, or one for all? Why does this stuff even matter? It's not in your front yard. How many jet skis, mini bikes, go karts, farm equipment, tractors do people have in Upper Township? There's a lot of blue collar, old school, original people that have that stuff. Tractors aren't a registered vehicle, so. Now it says motorized vehicles of transportation. You can transport on a tractor, so it doesn't clearly define that. It doesn't say excluding tractors. I, there, it clearly there, doesn't there, say it. It doesn't say it, but I think any judge reading it would be reasonable about it. I mean, what you're doing is you're-, you're You can understand how the average person doesn't trust that. Hold on, let me. It's My five minutes is winding up real quick here. Right? I know I'm running out of five minutes. My suggestion is if everybody talks and there's still time, we should get another five minutes to come back up a second time. Just a suggestion. Houses. Houses. As far as demolishing something, it just seems unchristian to take somebody's house, demolish it, charge them, sell their belongings, and oh well. There's some poor people in a township. We know who they are. Here, They're probably single digit that's, people. That's not what it is. I know, but it allows you. Uh, uh, you're giving listen, that, that, you're giving that image of that, you know, that we're going to go out there and take people's property. Well, you said this standards is for living conditions. The core system, and everybody is deemed as uninhabitable and unrepairable. Well, There's unhabitable. We have houses we that are listen, danger in their neighborhood. That we've been a tolerant that. township forever. We know there's $3 million houses, and we know people have dirt floors. When I moved, my neighbor, when a guy moved in across the street, he came with a petition, wanted me to get rid of my neighbor. I was like, hell no, that guy's been here my whole life. I used to cut fire with that guy when I was a teenager. You knew he was like that when you moved in. Now you're going to come to me, get, take a hike. There's That's a, not the way it is. Uh, Pete, I'll give you an example. There's, it was on Facebook, everybody's aware of it. There's a house on 30 Rivendell. It's a vacant house. It literally has a tree growing through the roof. I know. We have some poor people. We really do. No, when you they, go to them, that's not an issue. That's not Pete, that's, that's, these people left the house. I'm talking about houses that are inhabited, and it says even if they're inhabited. If there's poor people in this township, the same money we spend down on their house and selling their assets, why don't we help them? This, this Go to Habitat of Humanity. There's a handful of people in single digits that could use your help. This property owner bought a brand new house and moved, and is sitting dilapidated. I think we should be concerned about helping some of the lesser fortunate. And, and again, to take it away. Yeah, it's uninhabitable. It's uninhabitable. It's got holes in the roof. It's got a tree going through it. And the only, it sits in a neighborhood. I, I guarantee you, if you ask the people in that neighborhood, they, they would, they've had to suffer with this. And frankly, under state law, the, the code enforcement officer has the right to have that torn down if he follows the state law procedure, What's which is less, less onerous than what we have here. The only difference is we don't have to go chase that person once we tear it down for the, for the cost. Does a township have to follow state laws or can we adopt their own? You can can ordinance be rescinded? The, the law that I'm referring to, he, we, we have to follow it. 
the code enforcement officer files, this is an additional law with additional constraints. So we can add on to it, but we can't say we're not going to follow up code enforcement. My recommendation as a Christian community is to take some of these people that have no means, they have no opportunity, they're living the way they live, and once this law, you can actually apply this or we can duck it, but it's really there, we should help them. There's a few people there that could really use help. I think you guys should be able to get together and maybe get Habitat for Humanity, get some people. The amount of people in this township is contributing a small amount could contribute put together some decent housing for some of these people. I'd like to see us help. We do have a program through we program. our... Uh, we just passed, we just gave way too lots. Well, we, so we, well, we yeah, as a matter of fact, if you're paying attention to social media, a lot Not of the really. people who were protesting this ordinance are the same people who were protesting Habitat for Humanity, who were protesting well, affordable everybody housing. Everybody has issues. You know, it's, yeah, no, some it makes you wonder. We're not talking about them. There, there is the good people here. There is Couple, a, I'm running out of time. Well, Pete, just to, for you, one, there is a mon money available through the uh, affordable housing program. <clears throat> We, we do we take applications once we, we gave out at least a quarter million dollars we to, gave out to assist people, people repair their homes make them functional livable roof roof heating systems and all that with the affordable housing that's part of our affordable housing program what's good to hear so if there is somebody that you personally know in need have them contact our affordable housing liaison which is paul and we could probably get in some assistance see you tomorrow Okay, no problem. Thank you. Appreciate that. One more thing. You know, reading this ordinance, it says right of entry. It's concerning. Whenever it's necessary to make an inspection or enforce the provisions of the code, the code enforcement officer has reasonable cause to believe something, something. He can use his own judgment, and he's allowed in your house with a badge. That's a good way to Listen, I don't understand it's that. Already, now, it's already when I grew in the up, ordinance. When I grew up, if, our, if we played ball and it went in my neighbor's yard, we were not allowed to get it until he came home and we asked permission. That's privacy. You work your whole life, you own your property. It's saying that this that code enforcement, and it lists all the people that are, are allowed in your house with a badge. Come on, a warrant, 30 day notice. My wife doesn't want people coming out of the house is clean. Come on, give her a notice. These people are just gonna walk in. That's the way it reads to me and I could be wrong. If that's the case, I find a serious problem with personal privacy. There's just that authority is like allowing you guys. It's I'm sorry, like I can't, talking, I can't to vote you. yourself a raise. I don't think that's a power that our government should have. State statutes under code enforcement. I'm saying, can township statutes be different than state? The, the township you would get a notice. We don't just walk in and walk in your door. I don't see That's it. Not how it works. I don't see it in the ordinance. It doesn't say that specifically. Let the, let our legal counsel. I'm not a lawyer. No, I don't, you know, no I know let, let him respond to it. Let him the tell state you. statute controls what the code enforcement officer can do. The, the same rights that are stated in this ordinance are available under state law. A code enforcement officer, in order to protect the health and safety of the population, is granted those type of rights. They cannot go in without notice, without attempting, unless it's an emergency. Who decides? They do, and you can go and you can bid their lawsuits against cities. Uh, Ocean City had a huge lawsuit with the Bellevue when that came down. Dan, let me ask you a question. Has this always been the ordinance? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then what's happening here, Pete, whether a lot of people realize- Just because it's always been there doesn't mean it's right. It's always been there, but let me ask you, when was the last time anybody had the code enforcement officer Break down their front door and look in to see if you put an additional. When was the last time it happened? But it gives them the right to do it. That's concerning. Not necessarily. I'm not saying he does or doesn't, but it says because he's it's allowed. It's not an emergency situation. I could be wrong, but it says he's allowed, so I'm wondering why he's allowed. Under an emergency situation, which was, and we don't want to really talk about it because it is a litigation, the one house that we're talking about here, it was an emergency situation. It's going to cave in. You can see it. That, you know, get actually get a, a family warrant. member got you know, give them a notice, go in. As far as limiting personal items in your yard, just as far as limiting them, you know, the guys that have cars, Hobie, thank you so much for the pumpkin run. My kids have been going there since they were this big. It's wonderful to have it in Upper Township. Come up with a new name for this year. Rick is well, fine, I'll help you. <laughs> however, however, the people that put on that show, the guys that have cars, the guys that bring all their stuff. These are the people you're hurting with the kind of stuff you're talking about. And the whole township went and enjoyed that. I can't build a car unless I have parts. I can't build a car unless I have more than one car. We bring it to the show, everybody enjoys it. The whole township has a good time, but now you're saying we can't do it. You know, so you gotta realize who you're hurting here. There's a blue collar element of Upper Township, you know, 
that does that. It's not just fancy people. We were here for all the time. Fancy people came as we grew up, and we tolerate them. They should tolerate us. Now, when you're going to limit cars, what else are you going to limit? Where does that actually stop? Bird bats, fountains, dog houses. I mean, some people like to collect surfboards and beach chairs. I like cars. So I think it's discriminatory against the guys that like this type of living, that enjoy it, have been here their whole life. So I think there's something you need to give some extra consideration to you see if you can come up with some better ideas on it. All right? Thanks for your time. I know I talked more than five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So now the shoulders are allowed to come talk. <laughs> Uh, John Kevin Grubb, 216 Route 15 Greenfield. Uh, I just got one more thing. Everybody pretty much has said everything that made any sense is opposing these ordinances. I just have one question as far as the demolition of buildings. Some of the properties in the township are non-conforming properties. I myself just purchased one. And on the property, there's a bunch of buildings on it that are pretty bad, pretty bad shape. And, you know, if the township decides they're going to deem this as they're going to be torn down, uh, the ordinance states that Non-conforming properties, if a building is torn down, you're allowed to build it as it was. Something happens to the building, you can replace it as it was. So if the township were to come in and deem this building or somebody else's building or something else, that it's uninhabitable or just junk or whatever, we're going to tear it down, are you still going to give me the right to rebuild a building on that spot where you tear my building down? If I don't have the funds to build that building right now and you decide that you want to tear that down, am I still going to have the right to build that building when I do get the funds to be able to build that building where that other one existed? You're asking two different questions. One is a health, police power, uh, public safety issue that it would have to be a danger uh, and uninhabitable and as defined under the ordinance. Secondly, then you're saying, do I have a right to rebuild it? If you don't comply with zoning and it's non-conforming, let's say it was two houses, two single family houses in a residential uh, district that only allows one single family house and one of them so deteriorated that it has to be torn down and you get notice and you don't tear it down and they, because of safety reasons it has to be and then the court system and everybody agrees that it gets torn down, you're gonna lose your right to the second single family house. You've gotta maintain it. Now, that doesn't mean you can't fix it up. If you got the notice and went out and fixed it up and replaced the roof and, and made it secure, you could get to keep it. But my, you're, it's, it's actually one of the same. The intent of having the property and the buildings and everything is to eventually redo the buildings. Uh, or it may be or may not be for some other Two people. different laws. One is land use, and if it's removed... No, it falls under the same. It falls no. in the same category because if you force me to tear this building down or you tear this building down, am I still going to have that right I, to put that building back up again? Because it's not question. conforming, you're allowed to put another building if, up in its place. To, to force you to tear... To, before the township stepped in to tear a building down for somebody, you're probably talking six, eight months. If it was the building... Let, let me put it another way so you can understand it better. Okay. You got to... You don't have the cash, you're gonna refi a piece of property, okay? You have to wait for the funds. You have to wait for the funds to be able to come and do this. In that period of time, who knows how long it's gonna take for you to be able to, to make it accessible for the funds to be able to redo these buildings. In that time frame, the township comes in and says, we're tearing it down. And you okay. turn around wait, and say, well, I don't have Stop your right there, stop right here. Let me, let me, but if the township, they're not coming down, they're not gonna call you today and say, we're gonna be here tomorrow to tear your building down. There's a notice, it takes six to eight months probably, minimal. Is it going to state that somewhere that you're going to be... Can it, I it actually states it in the ordinance. I'll read it to you. Require This is after the hearing. A notice has been given. The owner can come to the hearing. The owner can propose what they're going to do. You would say, I come in. I'm, I'm trying to uh, refinance. I'm going to rehab it. There would probably be requirements that have been made safe and not accessible to neighborhood kids or anything like that. But I'll read out of the ordinance. Requiring the repair, alteration, or improvement of said building to be made by the owner within a reasonable time, which time shall be set forth in an order uh, uh, the, the property may have to be vacated, said building vacated or closed within the time support forth in the order. In other words, all that's going to be addressed in the hearing and the notice that comes out and it only gets torn down is if the owner doesn't do this. Right. I understand that. So repeat that to me one more time. There's two comments I have. On. Well, basically, when you ask how much time, there's a reasonable right. time. And after you get served with notice, there'll be a hearing where you'll have to present. A township notice. hearing or a court hearing? It'll be, no, it'll be hearing with the, the construction code official okay. where they'll say, there's a complaint. You have to answer this complaint. You'll come in with your evidence saying, here's my building plan. Here's my financing plan. Here's what I'm going to okay. re rebuild. The construction code official would look at that and either say, yes, that's a reasonable plan or no, it's not. Okay, if he disagrees, you can take him to court and say you're wrong. Right. If, if you agree with it, then you have your time. Okay. And 90% of it, if, the build, if you have a dilapidated building that you're remodeling, if you secure it, 
if it's watertight, if it's not breeding animals and trees through the roof and raccoons living in it. I mean, my kids have bought bank for closed houses. I mean, they're secure. I mean, they're in state of disrepair, but. Thanks. Go ahead. Okay. Anyone else? No other takers? Hi, Howard Cordial, Dave's Auto Plus. I want to know what's considered my front yard. What, what, because there's two spots. Well, for, for Mr. Cornell's property, one, you're, you're a commercial property, so you're guard, you're, you're regulated by your commercial site plan that you have approved at the planning board. Okay. So, so you have different regulations than what we're talking about here to, for most residential properties. Second, your front yard, because you are on a corner property, mm -hmm. it's everything from the front of the building that's projected towards the street. That's considered your front yard. For both buildings? From both buildings, okay. correct. And I believe there were certain stipulations when you came back into the board of where you could park vehicles yes. and, and your equipment and your stuff like that based on what you came in and asked for and what the board granted you approval for. So you, you're, you're regulated under, not under specifically what this ordinance is, you're regulated under what the planning board, I think you're at the planning board, Gave, yeah, you, so. gave you approval to do with your commercial property. Okay. So, so it's, it's a different conversation than I think that we're having here tonight with this. Okay, I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Luke Geisley, Petersburg. So I'd just like to touch upon the painting of vehicles. Um, I just think that's crazy. A paint booth is thousands of dollars. And some of us can't afford that kind of stuff. And uh, when you said, oh, tractors don't fall under uh, registered vehicles, and, uh, but it says motor vehicles. Well, it's a motor vehicle you can use on the road. So I was confused on that. And, uh, but you guys touched up on everything else I had problems with, so thank you. <coughs> That's all I got to say. Anyone else? No other takers? I figure we uh, close the uh, public portion. Oh, Scott. Go ahead, sir. Scott, you just got here. Here we go. Um, I was just wondering, do you have to follow? Name. Name. My name's Scott Phelps. Do you have to follow what's in the subsections and all that of the rules and regulations for this township also to be an employee? Everybody that lives in the township uh, has to follow. This is about bona fide you, you, you mean, citizen. You mean the have to? Yeah, it's about bona fide yes, the citizen. Township has to buy yes. too. The township, unless it's a use issue, can use their property any way they need. To. No, well, I'm, I'm talking about the person that violates people, the code enforcement officer that doesn't live in Upper Township but has the job in Upper Township. When Upper Township statutes state that they are supposed to be a bona fide resident within one year of getting the job. And there's also subsections that basically state that if there's nobody available in the township to do that job, then they can keep the job. But considering harassing citizens, it doesn't take that much. Well, that, this, this is something that you should probably wait till the public comment section of the meeting because that does not pertain to this ordinance. Okay, all right. Thanks. Um, I wasn't quite understanding everything that Dan was saying. I didn't have a copy of um, this ordinance 6 2018. So I think I heard him say something about you could um, bring it back for another meeting. Yes. And I was wondering if you were going to do that so that I would have time maybe to. Well, as soon as we get done with public comment, we'll draw a conclusion. Okay. In case anybody else has any input. Um, okay, and it was brought up about um, Chapter 20 tonight. Um, I was just wondering, I, I was at the meetings previously, planning, zoning, um, and Chapter 20 came before this board. 
I'm not sure if it was for a initial adoption of the ordinance or whatever, but Dan um, made some comments and it hasn't been back since. So I was wondering, um, you know, what's going on with that? And I mean, since it was brought up tonight, because people are talking a lot about the trailers and, um, you know, and the differences between that's not in this properties. ordinance. That's, huh? that's not in this ordinance. This is public comment for this ordinance. It's not in this ordinance. Right, but you were talking about Chapter 20 tonight. <coughs> and that, that's the, change that's and the that part of this ordinance. You can comment on this ordinance, not, not any other ordinance, just this ordinance. Okay. Well, people have been questioning tonight about um, the different zoning, residential, uh, commercial, farming. Well, and... Um, you know, y'all keep saying that, you know, it's only about this one, and then there's chapter 20, and um, I, I'm just confused because um, I don't know what happened to chapter 20, and a lot of those issues are in chapter 20 also, and um, I think relate to this somehow. It's going back and forth because personally, um, I know there's a trailer on a property behind me that uh, was residential and um, it's still sitting there and um, you know there was no permit pulled on that to live in it while they were building there was a house demolished there and um, <coughs> somehow it turned into a farming 16 acre farm track but Again, we're, we're, we're getting into we're the public public comment, comment section yeah, of the meeting. No, that's not no pertaining to the matter at hand. Well, there's no site plan on it either. But that's got okay. nothing to do with this ordinance. Natalie, unless you have something to say about this ordinance, I advise you just wait until we go to public comment. Then you can bring it up in public comment. We want it. We, we don't want anybody, you know, drifting away here. They want to. We want to talk about this ordinance. This so if you don't have me. anything other to say. Just take a seat. In a couple minutes, we're going to go through a couple other things here, and you'll have public comment. Anybody else have any comments on the ordinance? Yes, ma'am. Christina Schuler. Yes, I'm another Schuler. Oh, okay. <laughs> Use your time. Uh, I just actually had a question, clarification, possibly. You had said that tractors and hay wagons and what have you are use of a farm. I think you said. That. It, it, it's considered an ancillary use. For example, if I have a riding lawnmower, I don't think any judge in the world is going to say that's a motor vehicle under this definition. Okay. Now, could you take it and stretch it and say, oh, yeah, it is? Yeah, but that's, that's not a normal interpretation. That's not My a question is, do you have to be registered as a farm to be considered ancillary use of a farm? I think you would have to be. If you're using farm equipment, you would have to be registered. But well, Dean, I'm... I'm to to be a registered form or a form under farming assessment, you had to have five acres tillable or more. Right. Okay, there's a lot of people in this township that own maybe three acres. They have their house on an acre, mm -hmm. and they have a garden, and they might have a tractor for disking and planting. That's what I was going to get at. Another tractor with a rototiller, another tractor with a culvert. So conceivably, somebody with three acres and that could be ancillary be to their gardening exactly. work. Yes, could, that's could my have point. four or five tractors. I know I'm, I'm, I'm myself. I have a tractor and I have three acres and I. That was my question. I'm sorry, I seem to be annoying you, sir. No, my I'm question not annoying me. I'm just trying to explain. <laughs> and I'm not. I think I job. annoyed him. <laughs> so my question was just simple clarification. It seems to me that um, each person that has come up here essentially is asking for the same thing, which is clarification on a lot of these different things. Basically, and I speak for myself, not for everyone else, but. We, I, do not want a blanket ordinance that covers all things without clarification because the root of it is when there isn't clarification, it's to the benefit of the person writing the ordinance. Chris, each, each zone has different permitted uses and accessory uses and allowances. What this is about is just general descriptions. Okay. All right. So when we address chapter 20, that's I don't for, know what that is, but that, okay. Well, that's the, the land use itself. Okay, okay. As far as the zoning. So when we address that, like certain areas are farm zones, certain areas are residential agriculture, some are conservation. You can have different uses in those zones. In residential zone, you're residential. 
So that's where a lot of this comes into play. But there's, <laughs> there's been examples where residential zone has existing farms in it and gets zoned. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, my farm, for example, was yeah, zoned That town. was going to be my question. My, my, my farm was zoned town, town center. But, I mean, but, I saw my developments right to the county. I mean, it's, it's never going to be a town center. You get to meet the criteria <laughs> for residential agriculture. It used to be 2.75. Let me try and be, and, and I apologize if I was abrupt. I didn't mean to be, but I, I, I'm not obviously explaining the difference between what you call police power ordinance, which is what this is, okay, health and safety and welfare, and a land use ordinance. What you're talking about is I have a use on my property that I'm allowed to use, okay? I, I don't know whether it's a farm or just a big lot that you use, you know, uh, equipment to, to, to do your garden or whatever. Mm -hmm. If it's normal, when I say ancillary, if it's normally associated with that use that you're allowed to have, that's not going to be a violation of this police power ordinance. This police power ordinance is for safety and health, and it's for people who have things that are not associated with their normal use of the property, that's not grandfathered in the land use law, that is beyond, it's inoperable trailers, inoperable motor vehicles, it's unregistered motor, motor vehicles uh, or trailers and things of that nature. Now, if you have a farm and some of those type of things are part of what normal operations of your farm, that would be a, a valid interpretation that that's not a, this doesn't apply to that because obviously you need that. Like it's the silly forklift example I gave the, the, with the shop right. So there's two sets of, of laws at play when, when you're allowed to have it because your use is allowed, it's not a violation. But if it deteriorates and it becomes junk in your yard, then it becomes a violation. I think the problem comes with lack of very fine description. For example, am I allowed to have a forklift at my house? Um, that's my, I don't have a shop right, but I have a forklift. Right. <laughs> at your house or your Right, right. Sorry, that's what, what I'm concerning with. I know it probably seems like I'm splitting hairs, but as the it, it would have to take evidence. You'd have to look at it. Is it normal operations? Are you allowed to do in, in your property what you're doing with the forklift? Um, if you're selling uh, 10,000 units a week on eBay and it's a business and you don't have the right to operate a business out of it, the answer is probably no. But if you have a farm and you're using your forklift to load trucks and unload trucks, it's probably... Okay. Maybe a yes. That was all. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, since so, so there are no more takers, um, I think with the comments that we've had tonight, the input, especially Dan, some of the amendments Dan wants to make to the ordinance, uh, I would make the suggestion that we uh, table it for right now, Dan. We'll, we'll re notice and we'll have a new introduction. Make the changes that we have and uh, reintroduce it and have another public comment. Yeah, you, are you, if that's a motion, it would need a second. Then I will second I'll that. Second. And also, is I guess as soon as we get some, um, well, was once we publish it, we can also can we have some hard copies available for yeah, the public? Yeah, the clerk's office will do that. Clerk's office emailed us. Whenever I asked for. Yes. That yeah. email, right? Once it's published, it'll be uh, on the website. Too. Yeah. So we have a motion and second to reintroduce. Mm -hmm. Got a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Yes. Second. Mr. Barr. Yes. Mr. Hawkins. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Motion passed. Item number thirteen. Correspondence. Ocean City High School students. Uh, the safety committee wanted you to be aware of that, that um, all of the uh, winning entrants to that safety contest were <coughs> residents, and the safety committee thought it might be appropriate, A, to make the committee aware of the, that, and that it might be appropriate maybe to bring them in and uh, recognize them for their uh, outstanding uh, commitment to safety and, you know, taking on that project as high school students and um, just looking out for uh, 
safety of our residents. You said you wouldn't do a resolution? I think that'd be appropriate. Okay. I, do we need to do that by motion or? Yeah. You need a motion or anything to make it your, your uh, the next meeting? Just direction is good enough. Okay. Yeah. Good. Under new business, item number 14, the Greater Tuckahoe Area Merchants Association <coughs> requesting use of the Tuckahoe Beach to hold the annual Kazoo and Kayak race on August 5th, 2018. Motion to approve. Second. Cole Rollmore? Barr? Yes. Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Commissioner Sari? 15, the Greater Tuckahoe Area Merchants Association requests to hold a raffle number 499 at Tuckahoe Beach on August 5th, 2018 at 12.30 p.m. Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll bar. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Commissioner Sari? Can we get a motion to pay the bills? I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of the meeting. Check. Bar? Bar? Yes. Mr. Cogger? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Perry? Then we have reports of municipal departments that can be found in the green team on the uh, township website and motion to approve the reports. Second. Mr. Bar? Yes. Mr. Cogger? Yes. 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 Okay, that being said, we'll open up to uh, any public comment. Anybody that wishes to make public comment, same as what we did before, come up to the mic, your name, your address. Hi, Donna Mason, and I live over at 49 in Tuckahoe. Um, when we were talking about, this isn't about the ordinance, but when we were talking yeah. about the ordinance, um, it was brought up about the affordable housing. Upper Township did get a grant for that affordable housing. And at the, a few years back, when he's had that grant, several people were sent to this township to get assistance, people that were poor and needed help. Apparently, they were told they had to talk to one person. That person's not at the township anymore. And no one could give them information. Is this stuff posted on the Upper Township website? Well, oh. Right now, I mean, back, I think, it, I think it was maybe back in 2012, we had a program where we uh, um, assisted 14 residents and we had a specific program that was advertised and stuff like that. I, and I think we addressed everybody that we had applications for. We, we have had some people come in to us since then the township did not have any money earmarked for that. There was one person that came in, made a request, I think, last year before the winter time and, and had an emergency request. I had asked them to fill out some uh, paperwork, but they never uh, resubmitted some of the initial paperwork back to submit the committee uh, for, for uh, consideration. So, I mean, at this point, you know, the, because we don't have an active program, but we would look at emergency considerations and, you know, I'd bring those to the township committee's attention. Well, this was someone that when they called were told they had to speak to someone else and nobody could give her information and when she did finally get a hold of them then she was told to go to, she had to apply at an accountant's office but it took her weeks to get a hold of he's not here anymore but i mean why is this information when you do have the money is it put on the website so the township residents know about it yeah. when we had when we, when we had the program there was uh, several different public notifications as well as postings throughout the township of the program. And that's how she finally got a hold of someone because I gave her a copy of the article that was in the paper. But I would think there would be more information out there for the residents. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, my name is William Westburn, uh, 90 Schoolhouse. Uh, I was here back in March in regard to the beach in Tuckahoe uh, not being maintained. Um, it's still, there's not, there's hardly a square inch of sand left there because it's so overgrown. I mean, I'm sure, like I stated then, that something will be done for the kayak race and never again. Um, I just, like I said, I was here in March and was promised that it'd be maintained and it hasn't been at all. Um, I guess on the, at the same time, there's, if there could be more uh, garbage 
cans put out there, you know, a way to, so that we could keep it halfway decent. Would, um, the, I have one comment about the, the change to the, to the, the amendments to the, the current law would be that if the purpose would be to clarify that it should do more clarify, clarifying. Uh, I mean, if, I don't know if I'm, not, if I'm not allowed to have more than one unregistered vehicle like that was talked about, what those unregistered vehicles are, the dilapidated homes, is it okay if I put my dilapidated home on my registered trailer and park it on the side of Route 50, is that okay? Or just think it needs to be more clear about what all the intentions are there, in my opinion. Thank you. Natalie Meeks, Petersburg. Um, for the lady that asked about the uh, affordable housing, um, the COA, um, I, I was at a hearing um, in um, Atlantic City uh, a few months ago, and um, I'm just wondering, maybe Paul, you have some kind of update on what's going on with um, that affordable housing. Um, and that did include the, um, the reason that you gave the two properties to the Habitat for Humanity because you were required to do that. Um, no, we weren't. Well, you were required to. It, we get credit for it, though. We, got we credit needed for credits. It. it was within our plan. Well, we weren't required to. It became part of our plan once we decided yes. to do it. Well, uh, the planning board is still working on. Yeah, isn't um, it supposed to come before the court again in August? And, um, yes. I mean, the planning board at its last meeting last week had discussions regarding the master plan re-examination. Uh, we'll probably be having at least one or two more meetings regarding the master plan re-examination uh, to make recommendations to the township committee before our uh, required deadline for the courts. And um, Harry Vanderslice uh, with his um, Osprey down there, like um, I thought he was required to put 20% um, in affordable housing in there, and it's my understanding when I stop by that they have no intent of putting that 20% um, within that area. That um, he's purchasing properties outside of <coughs> that area for the affordable housing. He, and he's, I'm wondering if these people can get on those lists to get in there. Uh, that project has a open um, list. I think that it's. I mean, it's quite extensive as far as their affordable housing list, but you can contact their um, affordable uh, administrative agent and uh, find out some information, or you can contact my office and I can get in touch with them. But they're in compliance with their uh, affordable housing plan and the township's rules. Thanks, Dennis. Anybody else? Just a real quick statement. I've been in this township for 50 plus years. I either know you or know of you, and vice versa. I just want to thank you for listening, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks, Mark. You know it's not easy. I was going to say thank you, too. I don't want to go to the podium, but <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I can go five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> as long as your last name's not short. For somebody who doesn't like public speaking, you do very well. Yeah, you did very well. <laughs> very good. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment? Mr. Young, thank you as well, sir. Thanks. Scott Phelps, Upper Township. Um, now to my questions about employees having to be bona fide residents of this township to keep a job here. Um, I was told that only committee people do, but I looked it up, and it's in Section 5. It has subsections. Um, it states within a year you have to move to Upper Township and become a bona fide resident, keep your job if you are from out of the area. There's other subsections that say after that that if there's no one available in the township to take that job, then they can keep their job. But there's plenty of people in this township, I'm sure they can take that job and also I would like to know where the authority is because I know zoning is not the police where the authority is to ask for registration and insurance on a vehicle 
That is in question. Daniel? They, you, they can investigate. If you say no, they can cite you and you may have to go to court and prove it. Okay, so when I have a vehicle on my property that's brand new from radiator to gas tank, it just hasn't been painted yet, and I get to answer, well, it looked like a piece of junk and anybody can throw a tag on it, that's okay? I'm not saying that's okay. I'm just saying if you don't cooperate with the person investigating, they can cite you and okay. you have to prove it to the judge that everything is in accordance with the ordinance. According to the job description, the person's not doing their job. They're supposed to at least make a one physical attempt before they send a letter. All this person does is send letters. I was home the day that she came onto my property. Yeah, I can't comment on a specific investigation. I, I don't know the details of it, so I... Okay, all right. So, I mean, if, if they're not following the letter of their job, why do they have the job? I mean, automatically letters just get sent straight out instead of talking to the person. If she had to talk to me first, I would have showed her my license and registration. She would have seen that the car wasn't a piece of junk, as she put it, that I just threw a tag on. Did, did you go to municipal court? No. no. I, 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 I ended up having to come here on my own time, missed about an hour of work, to show her that it was licensed and insured. If you're concerned about the performance of an employee, there's a personnel department that you could speak to. Well, according to regulation, Section 5, they shouldn't even have the job here. Again, there's a concern you can speak to personnel. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. This time we'll close. <coughs> Where we go? Uh, Luke Isley, Petersburg. Just want to touch upon a couple other things. There's some people, like there's a house on Route 50, big old tent out front, a lot of junk. They never get bothered. But other people that mind their own business get pestered. <coughs> Why can't we just either everybody get affected or nobody? These ordinances don't affect some people because there's certain legal things that keep them separated. But there are ways to get around that. The township just doesn't do it. So things could be done. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. This time we'll close the public comment. And John, motion in the closed close session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. <laughs> the matters are personnel, Contract negotiation for the ACT and T cell tower lease and block 4051 lot 19. Potential litigation for Whippoorwill and litigation for blocks 291 lots 1 to 14, block 295 lots 5 and 8 to 14, and block 296 lots 1 and 2. I also include on my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public. Excuse me, could, I, could you move it out? Side, we're trying to keep going here. If and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. With respect to litigation matters, such discussions will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Motion is carried.